Hello everyone, welcome to the Worship Cast. My name is Franklin. Today we'll be talking about tips for a keyboardist in a worship environment. So, before we get into the tips, let me indicate what gear I am using. Uh, today I am using a Novation Launch Key 49 with my Korg Nano Control. Both of these are plugged into my MacBook that's running main stage using Worship Essentials 1.3. You don't have to have this exact gear. Um, there are many other options. There are also um, keyboards that have built-in sounds. Uh, the, the keyboard that I use at church is a Roland 300 NX and I love that keyboard. It's got a great piano sound as well as built-in pads. Alright, so again to preface, this is what I'm using to make these sounds for this video. Tip number one. Pads, 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 pads. If you're transitioning from a piano player to a keyboard, or whether you're starting fresh on a keyboard, pads are going to be your best friend. What do I mean by pads? What do they sound like? All right, I'll give you an example here, okay? All right, so the way uh, I'm doing it here, I'm setting the chord. It's going to be a G-shaped chord with my sustain pedal down. Now I can move wherever I need to. So I press, push the cord, put the sustain pedal down, and then I have my hands free. I move to the fader, and I can push the fader up. Pads comes in. What this does is it sets the atmosphere, okay? It's not too busy. You allow the room to just settle, okay? All right, let's give an example, um, a scenario per se. All right, so let's say the pastor would like to, you to come up and play behind him as he's preaching, as he's winding down um, his message. You could, you could just play piano. Uh, let's say we're, we're just going to do, um, we're going to key of D, but I'm going to start off with the, the fourth, which is going to be G. So let's say we just go here. He's still preaching. Still preaching. And then let's say we do we're we're doing the song Do It Again. Let's bring in the lead line. Okay, he says Amen. And then boom. And that's not bad. Uh, honestly, that is not bad at all, okay? Um, but, instead of playing the piano straight off the bat, let's say we add a pad in, okay? So he's still preaching, he's still preaching, all right, so I fade it in. Still preaching, still preaching. He's winding down now, he's praying. Okay, he's praying, 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 praying. And then he's done praying now. He says, amen. I bring in the piano, I slowly fade it in. All right, here it goes, and then. And 
we could add, even add some delay to the piano, okay? Adds so much you're just allowing the air the room to breathe okay um, it's not distracting to the, the preacher it's not distracting to the congregation you're allowing it to set um, set the, the environment okay which is going to be a, a calm worship environment you don't want to be distracting okay Tip number two, using sus and seventh chords, okay? What do I mean by sus and seventh chords? All right, let's say we're, um, we're playing in the key of C. Um, so that's going to be no sharps or flats, all right? It's going to be all white keys, okay? So C, all right? What do I mean by sus chords and sevenths, okay? So, the best way is a sus two and a sus four, okay? That's, that's what I mean um, by a sus chord, okay? What, what, do you, what do you mean by that, Franklin? What do you mean? All right, so, the best way to, for me to example it is to play the notes one by one, and that way you can see and hear the notes, okay? So... Here, um, we're gonna play the root of the chord, uh, which is going to be C, okay? This is the um, chord structure where we're gonna stay in, okay? No sharp, again, no sharps or flats, C. So, C, so one, five, and then octave, okay? Octave, you never go to the number eight. You're always gonna go back to one. And then the second here, boom. Okay, or you can go to the fourth, and then three. That's the sus chord, okay? You're going to be playing a sus two to three, or sus four to a three. You don't have to go to the third every single time, okay? And then... You can add the seventh, okay? So what do I mean by the seventh? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so now I'm gonna add the two and the seven to this chord, okay? Here it goes. See how open that sounds, okay? Uh, there are many young keyboardists out there, young pianists out there who, they just play the triads, okay? So C, E, G, one, three, five. They just do this. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. But keep in the back of your head, well, what if I spread my fingers out a little bit and play different chord structures? So now I'm gonna add this sus two with the seven, okay? So let, let me give an example uh, using this in a song, okay? So let's say we're doing, um, how he loves. Okay, so here goes. Um, I'm gonna use my chords progression that I've been doing, uh, the chord structures that I've been doing with the sus and the seventh. Sus two. Okay, here it goes. Sus two. I'm adding the seventh here. 
So that's four. Down to the three. So that's two. So that's two with the seven. Adding that seventh in. So that's four. Down to three. So it's two in the seventh. All right, so here's how it sounds without me talking. All right, here goes. Tip number three, do not, do not, do not overplay, okay? I know as piano players and maybe even beginners where you're just like, I know this song, I practice it, I'm going to play every single note that I can. Stop, okay? Um, you don't want to be that team member uh, that doesn't know how to not play in the pocket, okay? You need to play only the notes that are necessary, all right? So, let's give an example of overplaying. Uh, let's say we're doing the song by uh, Christian Stanfield, Always, Always by Christian Stanfield, okay? Let's do that. about that guys what do you what do you guys think I don't I don't know about that all right so let's let's give an example of playing in the pocket okay playing only the notes that are necessary all right Look at that. Look how simple that was, okay? So, so by not overplaying, you're allowing the other band members to have a spot, okay? If you're, if you're going here, 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 if everybody is overplaying, it's going to sound a hot mess, all right? So, you must, must, must remember, stay in the pocket. And you can add notes here, uh, small notes here and there. Um, and sometimes there are, there are moments where God is giving you that moment to, to shine for His glory, okay? Remember, for His honor and for His glory. It's not for you, okay? But it's for His honor and for His glory. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. The three tips I went over today were... Pads, 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 pads. Use those pads. Use the sus chords, sus two and sus four. 
and then also use the sevenths, okay? That will open up your chord structures in on the keyboard. And then number three, do not, do not, do not overplay. All right, so if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, definitely leave those down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Again, this is Franklin. Hope to see you guys in the next video.